Hey guys, and welcome back to the Spruce and Linen channel. I'm Janelle, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to make this adorable heart-woven wall hanging. So let's get started. All right, so let's dive into this Valentine's themed weaving. Um, the first thing you're gonna need is a printout of a heart. We're gonna use this as a pattern to follow. You're gonna need your piece of cardboard or card stock about two and a half inches wide. Um, I think I made this one a little bit more just to give myself more room to tie. And then of course, all your basic tools. We have a couple different darning needles here, a tapestry needle. Um, you're gonna want a dowel about 10 inches wide, weaving comb, scissors, um, warp string. I'm using this cotton natural colored warp string. I sell this in my shop. Hopefully by the time you're seeing this, it's back in stock. And we have some merino wool from Divinity Fibers. This is the color Shell. It's a beautiful soft pink. And we're gonna be using two different colors of Loops and Threads Lush Alpaca. So this one is called Rose, I believe. Let's just double check here. Pink Rose. And this one is just a really white, yeah, it's literally just called white. So this is like a whiter white than I normally use. I normally use a um, an off-white then we have this is from Michaels I don't think they sell it anymore but I'm sure you can find something similar this is a bamboo blend and it's just this soft peachy pink we have Burnett handicrafter cotton this is just that natural white looking cotton and this I will put a link for in the description box because I lost <laughs> I lost the cover for it and this is just a beautiful soft pink velvet yarn. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna cut all the fringe. Um, like the last start to finish weaving, I'm going to use my loom as a way to cut the fringe. Just to make this easy, um, I'm going to cut it all at once. Um, you don't have to do it this way. You could cut, cut each individual color um, separately if you like. Let's get knots out. But I am going to kind of toss all mine on the floor and cut them all at once so that I only have to wrap one time instead of five. That's where my knot, my yarn knots way more when I'm trying to film than it ever does in real life. Okay, so now we have all five strands. This is something I like to do just to add some interest to the fringe area. And what I like to do, typically I would use three strands of something that's about this thickness, so this is a chunky yarn. Um, so I have two of those, then I have two of these really thin ones, and this one is decently thin as well so that kind of makes up one so that's kind of how I decide how many strands I can get away with you could of course make it bulkier if you want so we're gonna need about I'm gonna wrap 20 times just to make sure I have enough all right so now you can see kind of that effect we're gonna get with the mixed yarn and I'm going to find the middle here, make sure that I don't have any from the other half, and then I'm just going to cut it off. And that is all of our fringe. So I'm gonna just set that aside. So now we're going to warp our loom. So I always like to have a bowl or something um, to stick my spool of warp thread in. Otherwise, it just flies all over the place. This is also a good way to hopefully prevent your cats from getting at it a little more. So for this project, I am actually going to warp an odd number of strings. And the reason I'm doing that, and I'll just grab our shape here. So as you can see, the heart is going to take up like a quite a large area of our weaving and I wanna have it perfectly centered. And in order to have it perfectly centered, 
that means we need an odd number of strings so that the middle string is going straight down the middle of the heart. You don't have to do it this way, but I just, I like it to be symmetrical on each side. All right, so I'm gonna tie an overhead knot just big enough to fit around one of these heddles, and I'm gonna start at the very left side. So this one's a little bit bigger than our last project that we did start to finish, and then I'm just gonna start wrapping. Now cotton versus linen is, it's a lot different. I typically only work with my linen warp string now, and it's a little weird working with cotton now because cotton is a lot more flimsy compared to the linen, and so I find that I do need to make sure that I'm warping it tight enough, whereas with the linen, you kind of don't want it to go too tight because there is literally, there is no stretch. Like it's a, it's a common um, thread to use in a rug, so it's like very structural. So I love using it on my really big weavings. Um, but I just thought we would stick with the theme today of kind of this white and pink and light and bright and fresh. Alright, so we're going to end here. And so I started here, I'm going to end here. So we have an odd number of warp strings and I have a string, an actual string, that's going to be exactly in the center. So give yourself some room. Those scissors aren't very sharp anymore. And we're just going to go ahead and knot this on. And you might find, as I usually do, this one is a little bit loose. So we're just going to kind of even out the slack a little bit. So this, this is one way while we're at it. This is a small, this is a small loom, so it's not like crucial that the warp be perfect, but it definitely helps the structure of your yarn or of your weaving. Um, but especially on big looms, if you're trying to figure out the tension, this is something you would do with a floor loom once you've tightened up the warp to see if it's perfectly even. You kind of get your hand sort of flat slash bent the other way and just kind of run your hand and you can kind of close your eyes and you're just kind of feeling. And I can tell that this very end is a lot looser and the middle is kind of tight. So again, for something like this, I'm not gonna worry too much about that because um, it's just so small, we can kind of correct that and it's not gonna be a huge deal. I am evening it out a little bit. All right, so we're gonna put our cardboard or cardstock in and I'm gonna go under and we're just gonna under over under, plain weave all the way across and again, plain weave is just that. It's over one string, under one string, or under over. And that's just repeated across the way. We're gonna tuck that in as low as it'll go on your loom. And then I'm going to take the white yarn and I'm going to weave in six rows of plain weave. So let's do that. Okay, this is gonna bug me. I just realized I have the loom upside down. Alright, so now we're ready to start tying on all our beautiful fringe and all I'm going to do here is I'm going to take one strand of each color. So again, we've got this rose, that peachy pink, the white cotton, the white alpaca, and then the velvet. And just like I've shown you before, but if I'll just quickly show you again for your, I think it's called a Raya knot. I just, I just call this stuff fringe. Um, but basically I hold it like this. So you're going to put, you're going to use two strings at a time and then you're going to take the right side 
and turn it under, under the right string. If I can do it all at once. It's a lot harder to do this on video, you guys. And then the left grouping under the left string. Then you're gonna make sure that it's even before you pull it all tight. So that's pretty good. Then you're gonna just kind of tighten it up and pull it down. And we're just gonna do that all the way across. All right, so since we um, warped an odd number of strings, I'm just going to warp the right, or sorry, uh, wrap the right side around one string and then the left side around two. All right, so now we have all our fringe on, so we're ready to get started weaving. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a scrap of yarn and I'm just going to find the center string so that we can kind of keep track of where that is. So here's our center string. I'm just gonna tie this here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our heart printout and we're gonna tape it to the back of the loom. So when I do this, I'm gonna make sure I'm lined up with that center string. I'm gonna just use some painter's tape to tape it on because that will um, not be hard on your loom. So if you're using a wood loom, you just wanna be careful not to use any tape that's gonna to wanna to pull up the grain of the wood or anything like that. All right, so I'm just gonna flip this over so that we can look at this and line it up just how we want it. So I'm gonna try to get that perfectly centered and I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of room on the bottom for a few rows of weaving before the heart starts. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the top here. So my tape is already sticking sticking in some areas and not in others. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that's all lined up nicely. Okay, so now we've got our heart on there and we can start weaving around it. So I'm actually gonna go all the way around it and then I'm gonna come back and fill it in. So I'm gonna take the white yarn again Generally speaking, I like to work with about three arm lengths of yarn at a time. It's nice and long, but not too excessive that it's getting all tangled up and in your way. And we're just using plain weave again, which is the most common stitch, and I use it the most out of everything. All right, so now we're gonna just start following the shape of the heart. And you don't have to be too picky because we're going to be um, mostly covering up this stitch line, but we wanna get it the general shape of the heart. So as you can see here, so far I'm just, I'm ending on, this is our center string. So I'm turning around on this one, then this one, and I'm just gonna keep going up. So this time, because of how the angle of this heart is going, I'm going to not go around this one. I'm going to skip that one and go around this one. So you can see I turn around on this one in the last row, but this run I'm going to do here. So you kind of just keep following the heart and then what's nice is once you've done one side, you're just going to copy what you did on the left side over onto the right side. On the other side, would you stay in the Okay, so I'm just gonna let this be here so you can pause here and kind of see what I've done. Um, that's honestly the best way to do this is just to 
pause it and look at where I'm at. And as you can see, I'm having to lean completely over this thing sometimes just to like see where my next string should go. And here, we don't want to end where I just stopped because then this is an opposite of this. Can you see how when I pull them down, they're on the same um, stitch line? So you always want to make sure the one before it is still opposite. So now we have the general shape of our heart. So we can go ahead and take this paper off. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna finish off the top of the weaving and then we will go ahead and start filling in the heart. All right, so to finish off the top, I'm just gonna go and do a half sumac stitch. And I'm gonna go around every single string for this. And it's just one of those little touches to make it a little bit prettier at the top. All right, so now we're gonna take our rose pink colored yarn and we're gonna go ahead and fill in the heart. It's so kind of devotion that brings me down. So one thing I've noticed with these types of weavings is that when you have these areas of where it's not connected, this is gonna to wanna to like kind of bulge out when we're done. So on this last row I'm doing here, I'm going to pull this in with the yarn so that we're pulling in that side. I wouldn't normally do that, but I have found that sometimes it just doesn't, the structure doesn't want to stay where you want it. So in order to not have this big long gap where this is going to want to sag out, we're going to just tuck our needle in one more warp string there so that we can really make sure that we've brought that in and we're going to be covering that up with the wool anyway so we don't have to worry about that So now we've got our heart all finished and I think what I'm going to go ahead and do now is actually flip it around and tuck all these ends in before we go in with our wool just so that we have them all out of the way. Alright, so we've got the back all tidy so we're going to go back to the front now. And we're gonna go in with this beautiful merino. And what I'm gonna be trying to do is we're just gonna kind of go and separate the heart. So we have kind of a channel in the middle here. And we're gonna do a sumac stitch all the way around. Now this is split, um, I've shown in my and a few of my other videos where I take the full um, width of the merino and I actually split it in half. So this is already split in half. I'm going to attempt to do this with half. We might have to split it in two quarters, um, but let's try it. I just want to kind of see how difficult it is to get something so thick through there because we don't want to be pulling on the merino too hard so that it's going to want to split. So I'm going to come up through that center string 
So this is our center. Oh yeah, I think this will be fine. So I'm gonna flip this so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna leave a bit of a tail so that we have something to tuck in later. I'm going to, how many strings should we skip? We're gonna skip one string and we're gonna go to the next because we want this, normally I would wrap around two and skip two, but I kind of want this to have as much detail as possible. Okay, so again, we're gonna skip one and we're gonna go to the next string. Now, I can already tell this probably would have been easier with it being a little less thick, so you might wanna go down to splitting that wool into four and using one of those um, instead of just in half because you can see here what's happening from pulling it through all those strings is it's starting to wanna get kind of bunched up. So I'm just gonna try to correct that as I go. That looks really good. So now you can see we've got like this um, a little bit more precise shape to the heart it looks a little bit smoother and i think that's looking really cute lots of texture there too what is so you can see here it did want to bubble out a little bit and honestly that's pretty normal for this style of weaving um, we're gonna try to compensate for that by just kind of shifting things around. So the reason why this happens a little bit, why it's a little bit imperfect, is because this heart shape isn't really attached to the rest of this, and I mean maybe I should have done it that way, but in order to get that merino in there, it makes it a little bit tricky. All right, so I already pulled out this strip of cardboard here and I'm just gonna do overhead knots on this end as well. I would change my ways, I know for sure. When all the crows decide to meet, they settle down beneath my... Okay, so now we're ready to tie our dowel onto your little weaving here. I've got about a 10 inch dowel by 5 8 so that's kind of the size I like to use most often is the 5 8 for these mini woven wall hangings. Alright, so now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to hang it up and we're going to steam the fringe. Um, so I'm going to plug in my steamer here. I love this little steamer. I will link it in the description. Um, it's perfect for this. But it, it holds enough water that you can do quite a lot with it because I think there's nothing more annoying than those like super tiny ones that don't hold enough water for you to get through all the fringe. And this is one of those weavings where, because we have so many different kinds of yarns, I think it looks okay having the yarn not perfectly straight. Like it's a little bit wavy there and it actually kind of suits it. So if you want to skip this step, as I always say, you can go ahead and do that. But if you want to straighten it out, we're just going to use our magic little steamer here. And I saw the angels coming down. All right. So here's some takeaways. This weaving is a little bit wobbly on the sides and that is simply because of that structure and that disconnect between the shape and the weaving. I don't think there's really anything wrong with that, but if you wanted it to be a little bit more perfect, I would say you could pack these strings tighter, like this is quite a loose weave that I've got here. But honestly, I think it's super cute super great for Valentine's Day. I think this would look great in a nursery um, or kids room in general. It's really cute. 
All right, guys, so if you wove along with me, hopefully you have a cute little heart piece to hang on your wall for Valentine's or maybe use in a nursery. And if you do use any of our tutorials, please use hashtag SLWeavingClub on Instagram so that we can see your projects and potentially feature you. And we just wanna see what you're making, so please use that hashtag. I will put it in the description box below as well. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm Janelle, and today I'm gonna... One more time. <laughs> okay, I'm done now. I'm done. Oh, you guys. I'm done. I have to be done.